What's going on, my creative collective? Let us away. We are going to dive right into your daily creative reading for July 20th. So let's get started. I have set the intention already. Um, so we're just going to dive in and start this on up. Okay, Spirit, what messages do you have for my daily creatives for July 20th, please? Messages from my daily creatives. One and two. Whoops. Okay, so this one is, you. oh, you shine brightly. I like that message a lot. Here we go. I'll read this one. And then the one that I'll read at the end says, you are magic with some dragonfly. I love that. I love it, love it, love it. Okay. Dearest you. All your prayers are heard and mirrored back to you from the unseen realms. Be grateful, praise things before they manifest, and always ask for the highest good. Here, let me do this so it doesn't look like uh, I got a little phantom arm there. I mean, you can still see a little bit, but that's fine. Oh, being pale. When you plead and beg, that will bring you only more reasons to plead and beg. Instead, offer your prayers as sacred gifts, as a testament to your faith in a higher power. Open up and let spirit move through you and comfort you. Add meditation as a way to become empty so you'll be ready to be filled with inspired epiphanies, peace, understanding, and joy. In this moment, your prayers are being answered for the highest good of both you and all life. Sometimes what you pray for is not supposed to happen for you, and your prayers will be answered in surprising ways. At this moment, we are listening intently to your prayers and want you to know that your highest good is our priority. All is well. It's kind of a... a <clears throat> it's a good message that's for sure i love messages like that because they can sometimes turn around on you right like you think like what i'm not getting what i want but then it's like what if that there's like details in the what you want like the big picture is on its way but then it's the small details that rearrange completely differently to what you thought so i love messages like that I, I mean, I didn't used to necessarily. And sometimes I'm still like, burr, burr, burr. <laughs> when it's uh, when it's a message like that. And I'm like in like freight train mode in terms of going towards. Right. But yeah. Spirit, what messages do you have for my daily creatives for this hero's journey spread, please? OK, so we're starting with the Queen of Wands. Very strong. A little bit of self-doubt, but I feel like you've got what it takes. That's for sure. Mm hmm. Excellent. This is all very good. <clears throat> so the energies that you're starting the day with are essentially the Queen of Wands, the Five of Pentacles, and the Hermit. Let me do this because I won't be able to hold them all up at once. Um, so in this energy, it's like you're starting. Let me do this so that you can also see it. Let there be light. Um <clears throat> Sorry, folks, my voice is getting a little deeper again, um, so it's a bit crackly. But the Queen of Wands, you're starting in this very passionate energy. There's a certainty about what you want. You're clear. This is a clarity of intention that then can facilitate a clarity of instinct, which is beautiful energy, right? Beautiful. Chef's kiss. <clears throat> And the five of pentacles, I think, is just a little bit of self-doubt, a little bit of self-doubt. And I think this is just a, a little bit of a reframe, a reframing of your perspective, right? Like I almost see like this scene as having happen, happened or happening inside your heart center, right? With the yellow, the consistency there of that. Um, it's like it's there's this doubt that's happening in your heart center. Um, and I think that the wisdom, the, if you go within, there's a lot of wisdom for you in that because it's going to facilitate some breakthroughs. Why do I say this? Well... Because the thing that could become a tower if it goes unchecked is the rest. This is a big thing for today. So I'm really getting this, especially with the full moon in Capricorn last week. I, that kind of kicked my ass. I don't know about you, but um, so just be mindful of any need for rest and also tend to the healing things that are coming up as they're coming up. You know, th this could become a tower if it goes unchecked. If you don't deal with the things that need to be dealt with, they can sometimes become bigger and louder, not as in terms of spirit being like, hey, hey and getting revenge on you. <laughs> that's not it at all. It's not like that kind of vengefulness or anything like that. I don't believe in a world where that's the case. I think this is more like, how are you tending to you? How are you? making it so that you're how are you feathering your nest as opposed to letting it get full of these like these thorns that can really cut you when you when you try to settle into it right like um it's like letting rest mend you and and making sure that you do that and taking time to rest right like last week it seemed probably again like 
you know, I, I didn't do some videos last week because my body was saying rest, 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 rest. And then, you know, as it turned out, it was that my body was very in like in tune with itself, like I guess just giving me that message because I really did need it. So listening to your body, regardless, like you are the most, you are your most important thing. You can't give to anybody if you aren't full yourself, if your cup's not full, right? So that's why I think this is in the antagonist position, but we'll get there. So the strength card here tells me that this is you kind of standing in that power, integrating the wisdom of the hermit post uh, kind of reflection and feeling like, oh, did that really work out? Ooh, I don't know. I'm not sure right? You go within and you reflect, you do the, you, you take the time. This can just be a bit of giving yourself a day, right? Or just a couple hours in an evening to rest and turn off your phone, turn off your computer, be disconnected, be unreachable, be intentionally unreachable, even if it's just for an hour. If you're a parent, that's exceptionally difficult to do. Um, I know, but it's like, it, it, to me, it's it's really important that you carve out some time where it's just you and your thoughts. For me, it's been, you know, turning my phone off and driving home from work at night. Uh, that's been really helpful to calm my mind and to just give me the peace of mind and to leave my day where my day was as opposed to bringing it with me, right? So that's something that I've been doing. And I have my phone with me if I need it, but it's just a way that I can turn everything off and I'm unreachable for that time so that it's structured, right? If it gives you anxiety to be disconnected because you have people who need you or there's responsibilities, structure it into a commute or a specific time where you can still reach out if you need to, but a, like a 45 minute drive, 45 minutes to an hour drive really is a beautiful time to just structure that for yourself. So build that in, build that quiet time in to reflect, right? So that's just an aside. Um, and I think that that's an important part of rest because it gives your mind a break. It gives your mind a break. Um, <clears throat> so I think um, I'm hearing be mindful of how you use technology because technology can use you. Now, this is, <laughs> this is a ridiculous example, okay? So um, there's, and you'll see this in the creative process coming out today, so keep an eye out for that. But, um, oh my God, Spirit, I just, this story is, anyways. So I was on Facebook on the app this, uh, this week, and I was, you know, scrolling through, and for some reason, I had, instead of scrolling, my phone picked up a touch on a Facebook ad, like it was an Amazon ad within Facebook. And it was for this weird, like, hunting umbrella that had, like, a light reflector on top. And I was like, what the hell? Like, there's no, I would never need this. I am not a hunter. I don't believe in hunting. I can't even fish without apologizing to freaking worms. Like, I just, it was so, so anyways, then I, all of a sudden, all these ads were coming up for, like, hunting gear. And it was just, it was like, it was so ridiculous. So be mindful of that. It was a good example to use here for you because it was pretty benign. Like, um, and, but it's, it's just like marketing and apps talk to one another. So, you know, it's good to take a break from things because if you find yourself looking at specific news or specific things uh, over time, your feed will give you more of that. So if you become even just for a little bit more tuned into news or stressful events, things will come to you that have those same keywords that have those same things that deliver that because you're, um, you know, the apps are talking across each other and producing data that says that that's what you want to see, even if it's not. So if you're doom scrolling, you're also constructing the future doom scrolling that will happen. So I find that turning off my phone helps to give me a reset. Um, and it's not out of any kind of weird paranoia. These are just, this is just how apps work, right? Like they talk to each other. That's part of their marketing functionality. And when we accept the terms and conditions for accounts with them, that's what happens. So I find that structuring time away from my phone allows me to be disconnected from that energy because I find that it is kind of an energy, right? So it's just being mindful of how we use technology like that. Uh, and the page of cups is the challenge here. So I think it's about the ability for us to see, uh, to see ourselves. Um, I'm, I'm hearing to see ourselves in the love we seek, to see ourselves in the love we give, to see ourselves um, in the ways that we um, want to be loved. Like to, It's like positive projection, right? It's positive projection outwards. And I feel like this is a, an important challenge because um, I think it's also about manifesting clearly. That's really what that is, right? When you start to positively project outwards, you are also manifesting from a place of great intention and clarity, excellent intention and clarity, right? 
um, and I think in terms of this confidence, because I feel like this is a bit of confidence here with the Five of Pentacles and then the Strength card. Here, let me do this so that you can see the Strength card. The the Five of Pentacles and then the Strength card, I think, is this energy of um, gaining your confidence, gaining confidence in yourself. And I feel like this is your protagonist position, which is going to inform. So the protagonist position, this is a hero's journey spread. So it's very built into storying and stories and storytelling. So it's it speaks to the challenge. It speaks to the thing that could become a tower if it goes unchecked. So it's like getting the rest informs how much confidence you're going to be able to feel because you can have, you know, you can intellectually understand your efficacy, your skills, your, your greatness. You can understand all of these things, but it isn't until it settles and you comprehend it, like until it's a comprehension in your heart center that you can then start to do something with it. Because if you're exhausted, you can't do anything. If you're tired, you can't do anything. Um, I, I, I know this because I had like six, seven pages of like downloads for um, content for something and it was, it took an hour to all come out this morning. Um, so I'm filming this on Tuesday morning. So it, it took an hour for all of this stuff to come out. And I just, because I spent this weekend resting and like really resting. I mean, I wasn't feeling well to begin with, but it was resting, right? It was watching TV. It was catching up on my beloved Ted Lasso. I love that show so much. It's so good. I might rewatch the whole thing because it's just delightful. Um, you know, I watched the TV show Mythic Quest, like all of these things that just take your mind out of itself, right? Take your mind out of itself. Um, now, I think the beautiful part of overcoming here is like releasing burdens and frustrations. And these can be, they strike me as like larger burdens and, and frustrations, but it also strikes me as some petty ones, like little ones. Um, cause there's a lot of minor arcana and court cards here. There's some strength, like the strength and the hermit are no joke, right? Like those are good, uh, major arcana and justice is here, but it's where they all sit that tells me that this has to do. And when I say petty, I don't mean, I just mean things that like 10 years from now, is it going to matter? Two years from now, is it going to matter? Right. If we went into lockdown again, oof, knock on wood, we don't, but if we had to, would it matter then? Right. Like think about it in that way. Things that are very that just happened or were around. Like if if something some detail changed, would this matter the same? Probably not. Right. It just wouldn't. Um, so asking yourself those questions and contextualizing frustrations and, and worries and things like that. Right. So and finding ways to befriend situations that might be frustrating. Right. I, I've talked about this before. I like to build playlists when I drive and for my commute, because sometimes it can be uh, just it, it's like ugh, it's the same. You take the same route. So change up the route. Put on a new playlist. Do something different. Just little things that shake it up a tiny bit, um, because it it starts to freshen up. It's like a it's a brain thing, right? Like it keeps your neurons flowing in a way that uh, you know it's it's a dopamine thing as well as a serotonin thing. They kind of are in conversation with each other, but that's how that works, right? So um, keeping that in mind. But I think that the overcoming here, your real gift is understanding yourself and understanding um, how much you do bring to the table because that's going to inform this clarity of intention and clarity of instinct, right? They do, I feel like those are so connected this week for you and clarity came up last week on Friday and I feel like it's almost like a reflection that was building into this week. So I think clarity of intention, I might actually write that down right now. Um, I do encourage people to do this. If you're a reader watching or if you, you know, I, I hope people do write it down because it's important when it comes in like that as a channeling. Um, that's for a reason, right? Um, yeah, I think that um, I, I, I do think that this clarity is a big deal for you this week. Um, I think it's a, a big deal because it's hard to it's hard to activate the this sense of justice this power of justice this power of integrity because integrity kind of is when your instinct and your intent have the ability to align and mobilize towards something for you that's the beauty of the the wands right the wands energy it's that primal fire right it's that primordial fire it's what took us from a primordial soup to people right in terms of i mean like depending on what you believe but that's that's that fire like there needed to be some kind of charge some kind of electricity or static or some kind of catalytic force so what you know thinking about what that is but i feel that it's it's intention clarity of intention and it, again i i was thinking about this when i was looking at the five of pentacles in the strength card i liken it back to there's a tom billio podcast where he talks to ed Milet. ed uh, his last name is m y l e t t right 
Now, Ed talked about how uh, he had met Wayne Dyer when he was in his late 20s, and he talked to him for a while on the beach. Like, he got to talk to Wayne Dyer. He had Wayne Dyer's ear for, like, hours on a beach. Can you imagine that? That would be incredible. And, you know, uh, from what I gather, Wayne was that kind of guy. Like, you could just hang with him, right? Like, he would just show up and be like, sure. Um, so at the end of the conversation, Wayne said to Ed, you know, you're going to, you're going to change a lot of people's lives. You're going to do amazing things, but it's not going to be for what you think it is. And he, he, he said to Ed, you know, if you don't have confidence in yourself, have confidence in your intentions. What are you intending to do? Have confidence in that. And I feel like that is really important here. And it came up before, but I feel like it's coming up again because it's the clarity of intent and instinct. Your instincts are clear, your gut instincts, your intuition, that's all clear when you have a clarity of intention. What is it that you want to put into the world? Why? How do you want people to feel when they find you on the path, when they meet you in their journey? If you have a business, how do you want people to feel when they encounter your business, when they walk away from a reading, when they walk away from an encounter, when they walk away from a transaction, when they walk away from a class, from a workshop, right? This is all part of a big, bigger marketing picture, but how do you want people to feel when they encounter you? And I feel like that helps you act in integrity. And I feel like there's going to be some decisions coming up this week. I do have a feeling that that's the case because the Knight of Pentacles tells me here that you've planted these seeds already. So there's like some some decisions coming up, maybe some small or smaller comparatively to others. But I feel like there's like building up to something bigger. Um, but it, it really is about releasing frustrations and, and sort of like aligning your perspective not just with what feels good but what's what's true of your soul what's true of you at, at your core so we're gonna clarify here yes chicken little yes do you want to do you want to clear the decks oh thank you <laughs> she's got a little patch of sun so she's just the happiest girl in the world right Um, okay, Spirit, can you clarify these messages for my, there we go, daily creatives, please. The <laughs> shine is coming from the other side, oh my goodness. There we go. I'm sorry I took your patch away. Spirit, what messages do you have to clarify this for my daily creatives? Okay. I feel like you really need to, so I'm just getting this here. I didn't clarify the Ace of Cups with the antagonist position. Filling your own cup is going to be your best bet. Making sure that you're full and are emptying on a regular enough basis to refill yourself and be refilled by others. Keep that in mind, right? And I feel like these two, the, the tower card here, uh, the could become a tower if it goes unchecked, it's like these two are very loudly speaking to one another. So that's kind of really important guidance to take away. Like I said, even if it's just an hour, even if it's 20 minutes, just 20 minutes, right? Queen of Swords, Two of Cups, Eight of Swords. Yeah, there's something blooming here. This is beautiful. Sorry, that's the Page of Swords. Page of Swords. You're getting more information here. You're getting clarity. And I think that the reason why you needed to sort of empty yourself is to be able to take in new information. This is the Page of Swords card here. And you're clearing so that you can take in. There you go. I'll give you that. How's that? And you get some sun. Um, it's clearing clearing so that you can be refilled and this is this is information that helps you know what to do next this is information that clears your path okay here you go chicken little go ahead baby girl okay um it clears your path because th there's instinct which is internal information that you're getting from outside that speaks to your soul and your spirit but this is information that tells you then how to do like what to do with it externally and i really like this information this is also a learner this is curiosity uh this is you know a learning card uh, so it's really it's i see it also as implementation because you have the queen of wands here and like when it's like when knowledge meets a spark 
things things can change, right? That's a motion to me. It's a, it's a motion card. Uh, we have the two of cups here, which tells me that there's maybe a way that you're emptying your cup and refilling your cup. And that process is going to, it's unrelated to relationship, but it's going to inform the way that other relationships experience you. So if you're in a long-term relationship, that could be something, it could just be asking for what you need, right? It can seem so obvious. Like we can just expect people to want to do things. I think about this relative to um, my Charlie day. So uh, this month on the 29th will be a year that I've been out to everybody. Uh, and you know, that I started to transition in a more, um, public way. So that's my Charlie day. I, you know, I, I, I called it re my rebirth day, but some people were like, that's really, that's not good. That don't call it that. And I'm like, but what the, it, it is right. It just kind of is. So I called it my Charlie day to make it, uh, you know, fun for everyone. And, um, and who doesn't love a Charlie? Like what is it just, it's its own thing, right? <laughs> so anyways, uh, and I was talking to one of my friends and I said, I really want to do something to celebrate my Charlie day. And um, so that like, but I had to articulate that need. And some people might say, well, it's so obvious. Why wouldn't someone want to celebrate that? That's true. But it's doing the thing that's just articulating like, hey, I really want to do something that day. I was going to just kind of disappear into the woods and go to a nature preserve where there was like no radios. Uh, you couldn't like there was no music. You couldn't run your car for too long. Like it just it was like nothing. And you could only carry your stuff into the campsites. I was just going to disappear <laughs> into the woods for that weekend, right? But then I was like, no, I really want to be around my people. It, as still as compelling as disappearing into the woods still sounds and feels to me. Like it's just, you know, finding that peace and quiet. Um, you can get that in other ways though. But right. So I was like, I want to do something for my Charlie day. That's where I feel like that's by filling your own cup, you recognize your needs and you, you're unafraid of having them met. So then you can just say, hey, this is really important to me. And you take the charge out of it where you're like, these people should just know. Should they? You know, should they? I mean, we celebrate birthdays on a pretty regular basis. But then as you get into your 50s and 60s, not everyone feels the same about it. So some people don't want their birthdays celebrated, right? I know when I was a kid, I used to cry when they used to sing happy birthday. Like, in, and I mean, tell me you're on the autism spectrum without telling me you're on the autism spectrum, right? Like, geez, <laughs> little things like that. <laughs> but um, uh, and anyway, so it's like, I didn't necessarily like that aspect of birthdays. So I, you know, I wouldn't, it wouldn't be a big thing for me, but you have to, that's as a kid, it's just an aside. Some people don't like birthdays. Some people do love them, but it's about articulating your needs specifically. Um, and understanding that articulating them doesn't mean that you're less connected to people. And like for certain things, like if you talk about, oh, anniversaries are really important to me. If you're in a relationship, then you can say, okay, that's really important to me. Set the ground rules in advance so that someone knows what's important to you. Um, and like, so that they never miss that, right? Uh, I f I'm very strong about anniversaries and things like that. So like that for me is like, you don't miss those days, two, 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 two on the time. But anyways, like it's, it's here, it's about articulating those needs, right? And, and doing it with a way in a way that's di like, doesn't have a charge to it. Um, because you're just understanding that you want your cup full, you want your cup filled and that you deserve to have it filled. So you're willing to do what it takes to have that because sometimes to keep this in mind, articulating your needs allows other people to have their needs met because meeting your needs might be something they really want to do. That might be a need that they have. So you're allowing other people to do that. So it's like this recipro uh, <laughs> this reciprocity that starts to emerge by doing so. And that's where that filling your cup becomes so important. Um, and it's not sexy, but sometimes like once you get into that articulation of needs, then you can get into the nuance where someone can surprise you because they understand you. They're curious about you. They're curious about not just what makes you tick, but what makes you feel joy, what makes your heart expand, how you feel most loved and seen and held while also being free in a relationship, right? So just something to keep in mind. Um, further to this sort of um, quiet reflection and going within and healing, uh, there's the, um, eight of swords here, which is about that retreat. So I'm feeling this sort of retreat energy, but look at the butterfly here. It's like retreat with a purpose because you're, you're already out of this chrysalis stage. If, if that can be, if that's the case for you, if you feel that, cause I feel like the hermit is like, it's almost like you're coming out of, 
Um, you're coming out not of your shell because you don't have a shell. I feel like you might have just been in this position um, figuring some things out in a healing phase independent of the hermit because I feel like you've been in the hermit phase. So you have this internal hermit that you can draw on for wisdom. You have this well of wisdom that you're drawing on. Um, and I feel like it was just sort of revisiting that, but I think you might have to reframe a little bit of this. Um, you might have to reframe a little bit of this butterfly and where you are in this process. Uh, because I do feel this three of pentacles is like, there's, th there's stuff that you have to do now. There's, th there's ways that you need to apply this either in projects, in work with people, in relationships. Um, I feel like this is an energy of reciprocity. This is an energy to me of reciprocity. Mm -hmm. it's, it's also an energy of grounding, like your confidence is going to be grounding you right now. This is, it clarifies the strength and the hermit. It clarifies the strength and the hermit. So I feel like there's, there are some ways here that you are absolutely going to be, oops, I went in this position. Um, there's, there's stuff that you need to do now. And I feel like, you know, that like there's, um, it could be ideas. Like I had a huge download this morning, but you could have ideas like that. There could be projects that you want to start up or, you know, I, people are going out to all these amazing events socially now. Um, you know, so we're doing all of that again. There could be ways that you're called upon. I feel like this is kind of like uh, mission and purpose and path on like, this is creative collaborations. This is building foundations for something. Like there's a way that you're taking these, the, all this wisdom, this reflection, this healing time, and you're anchoring it into something and making it tangible and real so putting it into the world as opposed to inside yourself and I think that um, this ace of cups it's so interesting to me this ace of cups is clarified by the four of cups and I feel like this is what can happen when you don't fill your cup you can be sitting on four cups you can have four cups to fill but if they're empty because you're not refilling at least one of them it you're gonna be bored uh, it's gonna set like despondent I'm hearing despondent which is a very strong way of describing this but um, it, you'll feel very disconnected at, at least um, so I'm gonna pull a notes from the universe card here just to close out this reading do you want one of the no okay no okay thanks spirit um, no <laughs> This I, I heard this message. This one's more important. So we're gonna read this two six two six was just on the time. Um, oh, it's so hot here today. It's like melty. Like everything's melty. Like you know when you just it's like there's a heat wave and you walk into a room and you're like oh it just feels like all the things in this room are sticking to my skin. Like it's just ugh. Um, <laughs> it's very visceral. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, so you are magic. You are magic. Dearest you. There are times when loss is a part of life. Sometimes lo a loss is welcome, like when you leave a situation not in alignment with your highest good. Sometimes a loss is sudden and painful, like when a loved one crosses over to our dimension. Regardless of the nature of your loss and your control over it, your experience is asking to be acknowledged. Tears are necessary, as is grief. When you repress natural expression of loss and try to move on too quickly, the unprocessed pain haunts you in destructive ways. We don't want that for you. Instead, let your heart break open wide. Feel the loss and integrate it. See the beauty that was, the lesson learned, and know that as you let go of what has passed, ever more of you remains. It gets better, we promise. Your heart expands with more compassion for the world than ever before. Love heals all. And isn't that just a beautiful encapsulation of this message here? And then also the justice card too. I was just kind of going through as I was feeling the energies of this, but like it gets better, we promise. Your heart expands with more compassion for the world than ever before. Love heals all. Yeah. I think this is about staying open-hearted, giving yourself the rest today and this week, uh, because what could become a tower is... Uh, it's exhaustion to a point, but it's also that you won't be able to recognize the good stuff when it shows up, right? You won't be able to recognize that good stuff. So self-care is one thing. Um, just, I would say, be wary of self-indulgence along the way, right? Like is self-care just, you know, sometimes it's the simplicity of getting, uh, you know, a coffee that you like. I, I found that over the years, Starbucks stopped making sense for me because of how much sugar is in them, right? So I'd always have this like sugar headache, the sugar hangover after having it. And so it's like, is it self-care? Not necessarily. So I go and I get a little espresso shot if I want anything. And then I go for a walk or, you know what I mean? Like those types of things. If it's like, if we're, if we're, 
we're talking coffee oriented, but I try to limit how much coffee I take in, um, at this point now anyway. Um, but it's like this, what does self care mean to you in the context of big picture healing? So, um, yeah, there's a lot that you're doing. There's a, there's so much that's coming. I feel it. It's almost like, you know, in the movies where the pavement starts to rumble and you see like the dirt, <laughs> like starting to, it's, it's like cartoon movies, right? But you can see it coming. And it's like, it's like this big party is, is, is coming because of the seeds that you've planted with the healing that you've done. Um, but the real key here is rest and reflection because in this, in those two things, you're going to be getting confidence and it's almost like your wisdom is going to be speaking back to you through confidence. Confidence is going to be the vehicle for that wisdom, that knowing that is expressing itself through your confidence is going to be really important uh, this week and today. So that is your reading, my lovelies. Uh, if this resonated, give it a like and subscribe. I'd love to have you on the channel if you are not already. There are also other ways you can connect with me on here. So do check that out. Uh, but if this is where we part, I hope that wherever this finds you on the time space continuum morning, afternoon or night, I hope that it finds you very well, my darlings. Take care.